two parts. Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, where today we're going to get to the point where I think we can about wrap up this knife sheath, get it off to the Bell Boys down in Kentucky, and uh, we're going to be finishing up our stitching. So come on in a little closer and we'll get started. All right, today in our stitching, I'm going to try to not use the stitching horse. I'm going to try to do it right here on the bench, and we'll see how that works out. But if you see the last episode, uh, we drilled all of the stitching holes because we had a thickness of three pieces of leather. So um, it should be a little bit easier physically to work as we stitch this. So I got two stitches to do. One through three thicknesses around the knife sheath and I believe I'm going to end up over here on this side and I'll start over here then we have the belt loop so that'll be our second stitch so we'll start with the largest one and if you go back and you, you see some of the previous videos uh, I do recommend that you take your thread and I'm using synthetic sinew but and it is waxed and I'm using black because I want contrast of my stitching and I've got my saddle tan color of dye and I'll wrap that around the full length of my stitch so there's one full length and I'm gonna do four times that and that always as a rule of thumb seems to be about the right amount that I need to do my stitching when I'm doing a saddle stitch now other stitches may not take that much because you you may not be going through the hole twice but when I'm saddle stitching I try to go four times the amount of the length of my whole stitch then I always give myself about four more inches just to make sure you'd rather be a little long than a little short we've covered that several times in my videos so we'll take and remember that leaves you a pretty long piece of sinew but we'll take our needles and as we thread the eye of the needle we can pull that through quite a bit and that'll take up so that we don't have such a long stroke when we're stitching and then when we do the other needle we want to make sure that we match that first side by how much thread we take through the eye of the needle so let's put it through the eye of the needle let's pull it through and then let's hold up the first needle and take a look and make sure that we match how much threads coming through the needle And obviously you want it pretty close I'd say that's real close so what I do is I take my needle once I have my thread through there and again this is waxed synthetic sinew Let's see what it says exactly they call it artificial sinew but it is waxed and with it being waxed what that does is that really tightens your stitches and it also helps control that excess it'll kind of stick to the other thread so it kind of keeps it out of the way I remember I was going to start on this end here and end over here on this side so it could be interesting hiding that stitch as I get completed over here so we'll see how that turns out 
I may want to double stitch or back stitch this at the end and then actually tie it on the back. So we'll see. I normally like to hide my stitches though down in the grooves, but we'll see what happens. So the first stitch will go through all three thicknesses and then we want to pull up our needles together and we want to make sure that that's even, that our needles are even. So we have an even amount of thread on both sides. Now, something that you can do to help this, since I'm not using a saddle horse this time, or a stitching horse, um, is you could put a small clamp, and again, these clamps are very cheap. They're not, they don't have a ton of pressure on them. And what that will do is the handles will keep this from rotating. It'll just steady it a little bit. So kind of like an extra set of hands. You can stick it between your legs and hold it. Use your, your knees as a vise, however you want to do it, uh, especially if you don't have a stitching horse. Um, and then I'll go to the second hole through the front, pull that all the way through. Remember, you're just going to pull it till it's all the way through. If you keep pulling on that first one, it's going to keep pulling the back thread through because there's not enough to hold it yet. So now take your second needle that's on the back side, put that through the exact same hole. Try to make sure you do not go through and split the thread because what that'll do is that'll weaken the stitch. And with these holes being drilled, it makes it really easy to watch that and make sure that doesn't happen. So I'll go back through. Now you can pull on both sides with both pieces of thread and lock that down. And we have plenty of room for more thread if we want to do a second back stitch, which I think I'm going to do. I'll go back in the first hole, then take the second needle that's on the back side and put it through that first hole from the back side. So what I'm doing, and again, make sure you're not splitting that thread. Make sure your needle doesn't go through that thread on the front. And what I'm doing is I'm just making two solid stitches in that first hole. And what that does is it makes it twice as strong. So by doing that, I'm kind of ensuring that that's not going to give way, it's not going to wear out. Then I'll move to the second hole again. So I'm, this is my second time through the second hole. You'll notice I'm not struggling pulling those threads and those needles through those holes. Those are nice, clean, open holes instead of being punched in there where we drilled them out. Uh, it looks like with this thread I could have probably went with a uh, 1 16th inch hole drill bit instead of uh, 3 30 seconds but it made a really nice clean stitching hole so it's going to make stitching much easier you can see those needles and the thread both are just going through the hole without much effort at all and again once you get the front and the back through the hole make sure you pull tight on each side at the same time, not until you get both pieces through. This coming through the back, grab both pieces of thread and snug or pull tight, and that locks your stitch in. So I'm gonna go ahead, continue stitching this, and then I'll come back.
the around the sheath has been stitched now I did go move to my stitching horse to do the belt loop because it's going to be much more difficult for me to try to hold that by hand and stitch through there I'm going to start in the front and again I'm using saddle stitch so I'll go through match my needles up so I have the same amount of thread on both sides front and back I'll go through my second hole from the front barely snug it up and then I'll go back through from the back side through the front second hole that I just came through making sure I'm holding this taunt on the back so that I don't split my thread with my needle now I can pull both sides snug and that'll pull that together um, I do have plenty of space because of my pre-drilled holes so I am going to back stitch back into the first hole through both sides pull tight and then go into the second hole again through the front then back from the back to the front with the second needle and then snug that down again and what that does again it gives me a double stitch on my first hole it makes it much much tougher so I'll start in my third hole go through the front to the back take my second needle from the back to the front and just keep repeating that as I go down again being sure that I keep that thread from the front to the back pulled toward me so that it keeps it out of the way as I send my second needle from back to front keeps my needle from splitting that thread you don't want to weaken that thread and believe it or not even as big as those needles are they can split that thread and go right through the thickness of that thread it's just like tearing it so it does weaken your stitch when that happens so I just continue my saddle stitch from front to back back to front alternating needles each time front to back back to front again I get down here and I will come back stitch one hole and then what I'm going to do let me let me move this and show you I need to spin this around I need to back toward the camera so let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needles and I'm going to go through the back side remember this is the last stitch in the last hole I'll go to the second hole and from the back I'm going to slide that through notice how I kind of slightly bend the sheath away from that piece of leather and the point of that is I want to get through the first thickness but not get into my second thickness of leather so the whole point is I'm trying to put the needle through the first thickness not into the second thickness and get that needle pulled through there it's really wanting to come through and stick into my front so I need a little more angle there we go I don't know if you can see that now 
but it goes through the back part and I bent this over far enough in the front and I can actually push that needle through and it doesn't go through the front part. Now I may need my small needle nose at this point to help me get that needle out of there or through there but you can see it pull through. Now what that does is it's pulling that thread through and it hides it. So I can pull that needle off of that thread. Now, the second thing is I take my second needle and it's in the next hole. I take it to the first hole. It's in the second hole. I take it to the first hole and do the same thing. It's a little easier because it's on the end. So I take it through only the back part of the leather and pull it all the way through. Take my needle off. Now, watch what happens. I take both pieces, tie me a knot. Watch what happens to the knot. The knot disappears behind the piece of leather. So that's a hidden knot. The next thing I'll do, um, let me widen out the view so I can show you what I'm going to do next. Take that out of the stitching saddle. Take my scissors. And I'm going to cut those threads. And I am going to leave just a little bit outside of that piece of leather so I can see them. Not, not long, but just so I could see those threads. See them sticking out of there? Now, next thing I'll do is I'll put something in there, like a scribe, those threads that are hanging there. Take my lighter, and I'm basically going to melt those two pieces of thread that are hanging off of there and it's melting the wax that's on the thread push them down in there while they're hot behind that piece of leather sorry my battery died I had to switch batteries so you want to push those pieces of thread that you heated up down behind that piece of leather on the back take your mallet and you're going to flatten that out. And when you do that, it completely hides that knot. Can't even tell that knot's in there. So it makes for a real nice hidden knot. And then you have your belt loop. Now again, I used the black thread because I wanted to make a real distinct difference, a contrast between the saddle tan and the black thread. So I think it turned out pretty good. Now one thing I noticed when I did this, while I was doing my sewing, I uh, noticed that it kind of looked plain. I mean, I was pretty happy with the way the uh, the Bell Life logo turned out in hand tooling that, but it still looked a little plain. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of decorative stamping around the inside of my stitch line. And I think that'll just set it right off. So hang on, I'll take you along for that, and then we should be finished. I'll put a finish coat on it when we're done, uh, just to seal it. But let's go ahead and case this one more time. And I'm just going to case the front where I'm going to be doing the stamping.
and again you don't want to soak it down you just want to get it damp put my needles and my thread up here I like to try to clean up after myself as I go because if not you guys know how that goes you end up with a huge mess so throw my scrap leather back in my barrel find which one of these stamps that I want to use I think I'll use one of these veiners and I think I'll use the real decorative one I've got a smaller veiner it's fairly plain then I have a larger veiner that's a little more decorative. You can see it's got some sculpting right there. So I'm going to use the larger veiner. And again, when you case that leather, um, let it sit for a minute. Let it start coming back to the natural color which in this case would be the saddle tan when I hit that punch oh yeah much better much cleaner and I should have done that on this front piece before I ever sewed it together but uh, really should have done it before I ever dyed it, but I didn't think I was going to put anything on there. Uh, but after getting it all sewed together, then I realized it needed just a little something else. Not much. Just a little decoration. Kind of blend in with this. Bell Life logo. And I think this is going to do it. Not too deep. Just enough. Give it a little bit of decoration. Offset that logo just a hair. Now you can see what that did. See what that did around the edge here, around this border of this black thread? Look what that did. That really set that off. So that turned out great. I'm glad I decided to do that. So we'll let this dry. Uh, I'll hang it up. And then I'll put a coat of sealer on it and I'll mail it to the Bell Boys. And if you want to see that, um, you'd have to watch the Bell Life Vlogs channel and every week they do Bell Mail. So I will send this to them in Bell Mail and let's see how the knife fits. Look at that, it slides in there perfect absolutely perfect so taking your time makes everything wonderful and I will put a small strap holding strap with a snap on it up here before I send it but that completes the knife sheath build um, turned out really nice not hard to do if you, want, you have a knife or you want to buy a knife and build a sheath, you can do it. No problems. So thank you guys for tuning in. 
on this knife sheath project. Next time you tune in, we'll be starting another project, something totally different. So come back, check that out. Um, it'll be a surprise. So thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.